we're going to switch gears right now because we do have our first special guest of the evening. He's in the building. Um, like I said before, uh, this is the the kind of the start of, of the spring sports calendar. Uh, started last week, really, with softball. And now uh, this weekend we have the home opening for the men's baseball team at A&T. And as I guess tonight, I want to bring on Coach uh, Ben Hall, a friend of mine. Let me bring him to the, to the show. Coach Hall, can you hear me? What's up? Yeah, guys, can you hear me? What's up, yes, Coach? Yes. Can everybody hey, hear Coach? Him? Yeah. Yeah, I hear you good. Glad All to right, be Coach. on. I hope, hope okay. you guys are doing great. Two things. Uh, can you see my swag here, Coach? You see, you yeah, see you look, that's how, sharp. That's hey, good. hey, see that? All right, yeah. all right, so 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 guys, uh, you know I don't I don't like to brag too much. I'm like like you say, Craig. I'm super humble. I don't like to show off my, my toys or anything. But I got I got this this beauty right here from uh, Coach Hall. He came to me at a uh, men's basketball game, and he said, you know, these are like these mint edition. Can't even buy these in the store. Street value, this astronomical price. So he, he let me have this. Oh, so I'm, I'm super pleased. Well, it, 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 it was meant for you because the two I had left fit you and your son perfect. So it was yes. like, it was yeah. meant to be. Man, I tell you, I appreciate it, man. And I'm not hard to please. You give me free stuff, uh, I support you for life. I don't care if you guys <laughs> win any more games. I'm always going to be in your court. But, Coach, we got, we, we're got glad to have you here. It's been a long time coming. I've been talking to me about trying to get you on the show. And yeah. it's a very exciting. It's a very exciting time. But before we start, uh, you are super knowledgeable about baseball. Could you please uh, inform my two co-hosts here that the um, two, 2017 World Series, Houston Astros, that is not tainted. That is a legitimate championship. Could you please explain to these guys? <laughs> yeah. that, that there's no asterisk behind that. Go ahead, Coach. The floor is yours, Coach Hall. <laughs> is there an asterisk on it yet right now? I don't think there's a fish. In my book, as a Yankee fan, Coach, there is. All right. As a Yankee yeah. Fan, yeah. 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 Yeah, you're stealing signs. Yeah. Yeah. You're stealing signs. You get an asterisk. <laughs> well, that's so, like you said in baseball, it, it's all happening everywhere else. They're just swings and got caught. So <laughs> thank you. you know, but. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's exactly my position. So thanks for hey. for clearing up that culture. So coach, what, what's going on this weekend? We got we got the first we got the first uh series of the season. Um you got a bunch of new guys yeah down there at War Memorial Stadium. Give us a uh just an overview what, what what to expect this weekend. Yeah, so we, we got obviously opening day Friday at four o'clock and um and it's always for baseball coaches, baseball people, this, you know, I always talk about, you know, you watch the Super Bowl and it's like you wake up the next morning, you know exactly what's going on. Cause it, that always is the week before opening day and you know, you're, it's, it's baseball time. And, but, uh, but yeah, you know, it's an exciting time. These guys, you know, most people don't realize these guys get here in August and they, they don't, they, there's not a game coming up for five months. Right. And they, they hear all campus working for a long time waiting to play and typically we're the last sport to get going so um just you know there's a lot of that pent-up energy and you know they're tired of playing each other and they want to you know you obviously want to see another team so got a really good ball club coming in you know pick second in the a10 in dayton and uh, have had a lot of success up there so it's going to be a good challenge right out of the gate uh, and i think both teams in some form probably have a lot of the same things going on you know new players acclimating a lot of newcomers uh whether it be transfers or freshmen and and so you know both both teams will probably be in the same boat you know really trying to judge competitiveness and seeing who can do what and, and just get the guys out there and play somebody else so so coach real quick so i, I look at the roster today and i saw a whole lot of f's and sophomores you got yeah. a lot of young guys on on this team so how, how do yeah. you how how you bring those guys up quick and and, and yeah. throw them to the fire? Well, it's we've been super fortunate. I mean, shoot, the last price since 2017, I feel like we've always had a veteran team. It almost, it almost is like every year you're just reloading a couple spots, you know. And at some point you're going to have turnover, and at some point you're going to have youth. And um, I think what'll be interesting as the year comes, there we're young in some spots, but some of our transfers have a lot more experience than you know, might be led on. And, you know, two of them came over from Central. Both were all oh, conference I, I, players. I, I, at I remember, I remember seeing those. Yeah. Those. You know, and both those guys are bringing, you know, second, third year experience. And um, 
you know, our, our shortstop's going to be out there this weekend, you know, started at Elon, you know, so he's got three years of, of college experience and, and you'll, you know, you can see it in him and the way he goes about his business. So, you know, a lot of the youth really just comes from what happened in COVID and how hard it was to recruit. You know, we, we weren't allowed to go out and watch kids and, and you guys know in baseball, you, you can get tricked real fast. If, if you're not watching, you can't, you can't recruit off video. It's tough. But that's what we had to do. And so, you know, a lot of those kids that we brought in in that class were guys we were watching over video over the summer. And so, you know, we brought in a bunch of freshman pitchers and got a really, really talented freshman catcher that that will be out there this weekend from Florida. And so, you know, we're, it's going to be, you know, you're, you're, what, what you see this weekend won't, won't be what you see in six weeks. We got to get some young pitchers out there and get their feet wet and kind of get them through some adversity and, and, but in the end you, you throw them into the deep end and say, Hey, start swimming, you know, and that's, so, that's what college baseball is all about. So. So do you have a ace that you can kind of identify right now? Do you have yeah, one guy? I, yeah. I, w I wouldn't even say, you know, like in years past, you had a guy like Evan Gates who yes. you just throw out there and the ball game's over or, or like cutter dials in 2017. I mean, the guy gave up two runs mm -hmm. and, you know, 25 appearances over the course of the whole season. You know, we, we don't have a pitching staff like that. But I do – we do have pitchers in this program that are wait – have been preparing for their opportunity. And and two of which, you know, both are going to start this weekend. Uh, Daniel Carter, left-handed pitcher that came to us last year and, you know, just didn't throw enough strikes and, and didn't quite have the confidence that he needed to, to go out and pitch every day. But he's, he's looked like a different person. It's been amazing to see his maturation and, and um, so he'll go on Friday. we got a transfer that'll go here from Pitt Community College, a kid named Logan Jarose, who's got a special arm. I mean, he was, he was signed to go to Georgia Tech out of high school mm. um, and, you know, had some academic things that, that didn't fit for him to go there. So he had to go to the junior college route and, you know, he's going to be anywhere from, you know, 89 to 92 with, with three pitches. Oh. So he's a good arm, a new arm. He's from Burlington. He's a local guy, you know, um, coming from Pitt Community College. And then, um, and then on Sunday we're gonna we've moved we've moved our probably our most experienced pitcher from this team last year, uh, Peyton Weinbarger, left-handed pitcher, to Sunday. And so we'll go left, right, left this weekend. And you know, Peyton again is an, has been his third third year and fourth year maybe, I guess, and veteran. And it's hard to keep up now with COVID, like where these guys are in their yeah. years. I was I was going to ask you that. So was there ever, was there like a log gym that you, because everybody had an extra year oh, of eligibility? Yeah, I mean, how, it, how, how'd you manage that? Yeah, he was. So, I mean, that, that was part of the reason we had so much turnover. I mean, we had nine COVID, you know, extra year seniors last year. And, you know, and then obviously you've got transfer portal now. So we had a couple kids, younger guys that decided to, seek opportunities at other places. And so, um, you know, one, one different when we, we, we're not over recruiting here, you know, we're not bringing in 60 players like a lot of programs are uh, out there in baseball. And so it kind of put us in a tight spot coming out of last spring, but um, you know, we were pretty fortunate. We, we, I think we tracked down some good transfers that are going to be really good here. And, and that actually, you know, they might not be experienced with you, but they're bringing the right type of experience in here. And um, so, you know, you just the COVID stuff is just hard. You know, it, I tell you the the recruits are more worried about it than anybody because those high school kids, you know, they come in and they're like, you know, is there going to be spots out there? And and we all know in college baseball, it's an equivalency sport. You know, right. so there's only so many scholarship spots. There's, <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, you 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 I mentioned that number. Go ahead. I got to ask the, you something. Though, yeah. I got to ask you something now. I coming I played football and I rep baseball because yeah. my dad played and you know he played football and baseball at AT and I always wanted to. You know, I grew up playing baseball. It was my dream at AT to kind of sneak out there right. and, and get baseball into my belt. I wanted that that title of saying I, I was a dual sport athlete. Didn't come to fruition. Um, but when I came into school, we had a dual threat or a two-sport athlete and, and quarterback Jason Battle, who also played on the baseball team, who was also yep. an MSC Hall of Famer um, yep. for what yep. he did on the field in baseball. And years later, I think we had uh, George Hines, who came out of nowhere on yep. the baseball team and led our team uh, at quarterback when we really needed a trigger man. And so he became one of, one of the thrillers guys. 
Um, so looking at your team now, if you had to pick one guy on your team who you thought had the moxie, the kahunas, the arm, the leadership <laughs> ability to step out on the gridiron and uh, lead our football team or compete at any position, not just quarterback, who do you think could, could who has that toughness Ooh. to go out there and play football as well? well? So That's my first just, question. Just about every guy on our team claims that they could play here in football. I mean, they all <laughs> say that, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, you know, a lot of – I was like, you know, I'll say, like, when was the last football game you went to? You seen our team? You know, I mean, it, it so – but I, I will, I'll give you one right now. And when, when you all come watch us play, you'll see it. Our, our We got a, a graduate transfer from William Peace. His name's uh, Tyshawn Barrett. And the rumors floating around this locker room, what – the way he would meet somebody in the middle of the field sound legit. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it sound legit. He, he he played he played football and baseball. I think at J J H Rose High School over, up there in Greenville, North Carolina. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, went to junior college and then played in Division three baseball. But last year he was like Region Player of the Year. Hit ten jacks. Hit over four hundred. I mean, he had an amazing okay. season. So he's a graduate yeah. transfer here with us, and he's a big individual. He he he's, is. He's, uh, he's listed as two twenty. And he's six foot tall from Greenville, North Carolina. I'm looking at his roster spot right now. He uh, he is a big man. And okay. the rumors floating around, because there's some kids on his team that are from that area, said nobody nobody goes across the middle when Tyshawn Barrett was out there. So if <laughs> my bet would be on him. My bet would be hey, on him. That's awesome. Coach, I love that you have such a good rapport with your kids and you have the post of your, of your ball club. Um, I'll tell you, yeah. one of the nicest events I've been to um, since I've been around ANT was the event you had pre-COVID. I think it was more of a fundraiser uh, first you pitch. For, your, for your baseball yep. program. Yeah. The first pitch. Man, what yes. an awesome event. Um, talk to us yeah. a little bit about you know how that came about and what you guys are doing to kind of keep that legacy and that lineage going. Because you had great guys like Joe Hill, um, yep. some of the old guys back, and you honored those guys. And I think that's really important. Um, some of us old Aggies, and I call myself an old Aggie, that coaches, whether you've been here a long time or not, take time to kind of recognize what's happened in the yeah. past and kind of draw um, the past and the present and the future together. And I've seen it. Um, I saw the impact it had on your program. I saw how your kids carried themselves, and I just was blown away yeah. um, at just the entire event. And just the, it was a magical night, man. And you know, yeah, I think, I think uh, kind of hit. But, uh, yeah. So we about? we obviously have taken basically a two year hiatus. We we we're not doing it this year either, and it just is a product of you know some some little bit of lack of help in some places and COVID. And, you know, not sure if you can pre-plan ahead enough, but we'll be back on track planning for next year for sure. Mm -hmm. And we we've got some some really good ideas, and, and we try to we pulse our alumni. I mean, uh, when we when we started, when Eric Hart really came, when he got here, he, that was one thing that we talked about when he first came. Was you know every place I had been, we had some semblance of a first pitch dinner. You know, whether it was, you know, when I played at Clemson, it was very, you know, low key barbecue, you know, dressed down. But some places it's dressed up and, you know, really nice. And and he did an unbelievable job. The whole athletic department did of really supporting the idea. And and it really it serves two purposes, just like you said. First off, it's to let everybody know that we're about to play baseball, you know, and and there's a lot of people involved with with this university that. Are, are key and connected to our program and then are ready to get our baseball season going. And obviously to honor the past, you know, and, and be able to, you know, hopefully continue to bring in speakers and people who can, you know, come in and impact your, your team. And then obviously parents and supporters of the program. And then really the last part of it is just, is to try to raise some money, obviously, you know, and continue to give, give you another way to, to bring in support uh, privately and, because uh, there's some schools out there that do some unbelievable fundraising through first pitch banquets. It's, it's amazing what some schools do. Um, and so, uh, yeah, but you're right. That, I mean, to for me per personally, for it to have gone those first two years away, it did was was amazing because th those events were awesome. And and the and the biggest part is like you said, it gives those alumni who, you know, we all know when you guys leave and you graduate. You connect, but you don't get that many opportunities to connect. You know, typically it's once a year, and that's just one more opportunity, you know, that's baseball centric for, you know, those guys from from past years to reconnect and and 
and that's what was more fun about it than anything, just seeing those guys, teammates, get cranked back up together and they start throwing all the locker room jokes around again. And, you know, you know somebody's, uh, you know, how good they were versus how, you know, how good they pitched. Right? For it, that's a fun, really fun time with it. So um, that will not stop. And, I, you know, the history of this program is pretty special. It's unbelievably special. Most people don't know it. And, you know, Me talking too. about some of the, you know, the impacts, you know, not just in our game, but just obviously in A&T, but baseball specifically is just unbelievable from, you know, those teams in the 50s and 60s and, you know, Coach Grooms' years and how much success, yeah. you know, you look back at that guy's record, it's, it's 30 years of coaching, the guy had over 400 wins here, you know, and it's like, I mean, that's unheard of, right? You know, I mean, he was basically o o almost two and a half to one wins to losses. And that wow. that just doesn't happen in baseball very often, right? Um, so w I think the next cool part about that, obviously, and I'm sure we'll talk about it, but is what we can start doing in our ballpark. And th those are things yeah. that when, when you talk to your alumni, it's like, man, you know, you want to be able to walk in the park and learn a little bit about what's really happened here in baseball. And so we're pretty obviously excited that's going to be a big step you know, as we move forward. So, so that's a good segue. Uh, the big news, I guess, last week or week before last was that the uh, War Memorial Stadium, the handover was official and the university now owns War Memorial. It was a weird dynamic because we were kind of like, we weren't renting it, but the city was, they kind of gave it to us, but we, we couldn't do everything we wanted to do because we didn't have our name on the deed. So to explain right. that whole process, and what that means, because now I guess it's a yeah. new opportunity to invest finally into the war. And, yeah. uh, you know, Craig, is he's a, a grumpy guy. He started a thread <laughs> on a Blue Death Valley Oh, He said, he said, War Memorial's a dump. Yeah, and I, I didn't do it. No, 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 no. Somebody. I, 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 I might have got yeah. it. Somebody said War Memorial yeah. was a complete dump, and uh, they were. Some guy uh, named Thriller. I don't know who that is. <laughs> but so, so, Coach, tell us about War Memorial and what it can be now since we have. Well, so when when I first got the opportunity when, when I first got the opportunity to be the interim coach, when I met with Mr. Hilton, I told him, I said, you know, and he he would tell you this, uh, this school has everything they need to have a have a high level mid major baseball program. We just, you know, the things that I don't have control over as a coach were here, and it's the things you guys talked about: the enrollment, campus, degree programs, you know, nice city um you know graduate support you know you know those are the things that you know a head baseball coach can't fix if they aren't right you know um we had to fix the baseball side and the things that we could control and so um the the potential that that, that comes with facility improvement is almost it you can't really even explain it um the best way i explain it is you look at other high level mid majors in, in this in this sport and other Olympic sports and you see what they could accomplish, you know, it always relates back to facilities. And uh, like I think about Coastal Carolina. Yeah, I was gonna know, say for, that they, for they years, years and years and years and years, Coastal was just a really good mid major. And then all of a sudden they built a new ballpark and they won the Carlton World Series the very wow. next year. And wow. And so and what people don't see is 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 how recruiting changes when that happens. And now all of a sudden you know, Coastal Carolina can get a, you know, a top 300 player out of Texas when in years past, the kid never even knew who they were or where they were. They're like, like where's Myrtle Beach? You know, they don't know. Yeah. And so um, this obviously process took, you know, we, you can imagine as a coach, it, it, it was, there were some rough days in War Memorial, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. but I continued, you know, to tell our guys, like, it's our park, like we're here, there ain't nobody else here. <laughs> and, you know, I, much rather us be here than be in a park we're renting and then get kicked out midway through the spring. You know, uh, there's yeah. some places like that. You know, I remember, shoot, it was a few years ago. We were playing down at Cookman and we swept them. And when we were leaving on Sunday after sweeping them, they were moving out of the locker room because the oh, minor league man. team was coming in. You know, and what a deals, what a rough man. situation that starts to become. So, you know, obviously the the potential is unbelievable because there's just no limitations outside of, you know, funding and what we are able to put into it. 
you know, you're, it's not like you're landlocked. You know, there's there's a triple A quality lighting system that's that's been in place for years there. So um, the question is, is just has always been when can we own it? Because once we own it, then you can take steps to actually like make strides, you know, and um, you know, we've done some small things in there. I mean, our locker room has been renovated. We, our offices are down there now, you know, and, and, you know, a new scoreboard a few years ago. So yep. there were things that we, we got to, but obviously long-term investment, it's not going to happen to you till it's yours, you know, and it's your property and, and you can do with it, you know, what you please. And so, you know, you just gotta, I just continue to be thankful that our administration continue to support the idea and push for it. Uh, because there could have been any years there where everybody just says, no, we're done. Let's let's move away from this. And um, I think that, uh, you know, with what's probably coming down the chute here in the next couple of weeks with 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 that and the opportunity to start advanced planning, um, you know, I think there's there's going to be some good movement on it. And there will be some phases that get to start happening here probably quicker than, you know, we all oh. would have thought five years ago. I think there's going to be some good action on it. Oh, okay. Um, yep. And, Great news. you know, and, and that's exciting because, again, I go back to it. If, if, if you've got a, if you've got an opportunity to develop your players, you've got a ballpark that people want to come watch in, you know, we, we don't sell tickets, you know, we don't have season tickets, you know, you, you know, Craig might have a seat that he loves to watch baseball at. And at some point <laughs> I want him to have that seat, you know, and it might be down the first baseline, you know? And Okay. So. But coach Hall, I saw, I saw a artistic rendering of, I guess, I don't know what phases was going to be, but it was a refurbished, reimagined War Memorial Stadium. Yeah. And it had like a smaller seating area right in the backdrop, right? And then it had like the the um the long side of the stadium was all like a yep. grassy knoll. You yep. know, it was like I guess you could sit down like a picnic style deal. Yeah. And that looks so cool where you turn yeah. that into like a almost a grass seating area. So on a on a Saturday evening, you could bring your blanket. And the, the college guys can bring their girlfriend, and they can just hang out <laughs> on the hill. Hey, right. I'm telling you that. But see, look. So Craig, Craig's, you know, you've been here your whole life, Craig. In this yeah. Movie, right. 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 You remember? You remember not the Greensboro uh, Grasshoppers, not the Greensboro the bats. bats. You know, no, no, you remember the, the Greensboro Hornets. And people, yeah. Gary I, Peter. I was born in Greensboro. Then I moved to Houston when I was younger. But I remember when I was seven years old, and uh, the Greensboro. Hornets play at War Memorial Stadium, and yeah, you know sure that was that was the thing to do in Greensboro. Everybody yeah. in the city came to East Greensboro to that stadium, and yeah. they had the beer garden out in the outfield, and it was live and jumping, and it's and the whole a old Acock neighborhood was it was just thriving. Yeah. And I can close my eyes. I'm a visionary, but I can close my eyes and I can imagine that. Yeah, you know, I can I can see that being a a uh, place where you're getting. You know, fifteen hundred people. Yeah. On, 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 for any given game, I can well, see that. Yeah. Guess you think about it. Just development in general. I mean, obviously, our campus is growing, and it's not going to stop growing. You know, we we all know that. And um, you know, if 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 you blink your eyes, and in you know three or four years, you got a nice new ballpark down there. Everything else will get nicer, and and will get more attractive, and um. And it, you know, again, like is, I think somebody tweeted a picture out of homecoming in '51, and it looked like yes, were, it looked like there were fifty thousand people yeah. in that place, right? And and so, uh, you know, we'll never have a baseball game with that many people, but yeah, in the end, you want a ballpark that everybody can be proud of, and that you know that we can schedule a Power Five team and bring them in, you know, and and that our kids want to be in the park all the time, you know, they they want to be there because the more they're there, the better they get, and. You know, when we bring a recruit in and I, we don't want to lose recruits because they go to another, you know, competitive institution and those guys are beating us on facilities, you know. And so that's, you know, it's an arms race out there. And and we all know how successful we are in athletics. And, and so uh, it's coming. And and I know that our coaches and administrators want to continue to to push the envelope every way we can. You know, I mean, Chancellor Martin likes to win. He's a, yeah. he, he he's a, he don't like he like winning. So. Um, we're going to keep doing everything we can. And I, I would be really excited, you know, once we're able to start unveiling some of the ideas, I think what you're talking about was an old rendering. It was one oh. from like 10 years ago. Yeah. 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 You yeah. know, but, but you know, I was, hey, I was just happy to see anything. I was yeah, just happy to see anything. I think, uh, 
it, I wouldn't be, you know, I wouldn't be shocked if in a few months we're able to start producing some, some vision, some vision, visionary ideas of what, what it might look like in the next few years. Okay. So I'm, 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 I know you got busy schedule. You got a lot going on. So no, you're let good. You go. But let me tell you this though. So I, I, this is funny. I actually was at a baseball game right when the pandemic started in 2020. I was in, uh, and Chancellor Martin, like you said, he loves to win. He was at, he was there in the tunnel watching the game with me, and we started talking. And I said, you know, Coach. I said, you know, Chancellor. Excuse me. I said, you know, who Coach Hall reminds me of. He he, he reminds me of a young Bill Hayes. Because I, I yeah. years ago I did an interview. <laughs> and listen, years ago I did it. I did an interview. I'm gonna tell you why. Okay, mm -hmm. not not the Wild Bill side, but but the <laughs> years, I, I did I did an interview with, with Bill Hayes, and he he talked about how when he started, his facilities and his resources were so so low he had to kind of uh go out as a hunter and gatherer and, and bring back his own stuff so he had to go to the business community in winston salem and meet with sarah lee and meet with all right. these the haynes corporations and get donations so he could have you know equipment for his football team right, right. and i see you being that same guy who's not going to complain about what you don't have but just find yeah. a way to, to to you know get what you need so yeah. I want to put I want to ask you for a favor, just to put okay. some on you. I want you to start being the squeaky wheel, right? Because I, <laughs> I want you, I, really because because you're, you're 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 a humble guy and you get you make things happen, right? But if you tell us, I want you to call out bluff because we got a bunch of people on Blue Death Valley who act like they can you know they got all this money, like these great jobs, yeah. they they give, they give all this money to the pro, to the, to the university. But yeah. I, I would like us to have some type of giving program just for baseball, yeah. right? I want to start a, a, a you know small size giving program, and you can like maybe do like a line item of things I need. I need this. I need that. You know, this is fifteen thousand dollars. This is twenty thousand dollars. I want right. to get this. If you put that out there, I think you'd be surprised at how people will respond. Well, I'll you give know. you. I'll give you a point on that. I think. I've always said this, you know, at, at some point, you know, that you want to continue to to promote to people who might support your program, how much the athletic department does support us, you know, and they, they come through for us. And, right. you know, Mr. Hilton in every opportunity and administration has supported us even, you know, and I don't ask for much, but you know, there are things that you got to put your foot down that you need at times. And so, but I'll give you a good story. You know, when, when this thing went live, uh, that it that we own War Memorial. I sent a bunch of messages out to our alumni and you know guys that I'm close with, and you know I had two alumni give us base. I had one give us a matching fund donation, twenty five hundred dollars, right there. You know where his company matched it, and so it was a five thousand dollar gift like that that night. And so I think that's what what I think about a lot. It's like man, when you can get momentum and you can get excitement around it. Like owning our park is exciting because now now things can happen and we can take steps. And it's not always like, well, when are we going to do this? Why won't we, you know, it's just out. No one really knows. You know, now now we know and now we can take some legitimate steps and start putting a schedule together. And, and when people see action, they get motivated to act. Right, and, right, right. And, and I think and, that's 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 where I think we're going to really see some some positive move that going forward because. You know, we do have supporters that have been really, really supportive of us. And, you know, there, there's there been a lot of things that we have been able to get that we hadn't, you know, maybe four years ago, five years ago. Um, but for sure, I mean, every Olympic sport at every school has to work the butt off, you know, to, to really support the programs and to make sure that we're, you know, uh, you know, not a drain on what the athletic department's doing too. So... I'm excited. So, Doug, you gonna try to make it out this weekend? Are you gonna try to be? Oh, yeah, catch we're gonna try to make it out Friday. I want to catch the opener, man. First pitch is always exciting. So, I'm yeah, try to slide out when I get so off I work. Think, and, uh, uh, yeah, you, you guys will. You guys, I think, will as we go. You'll be excited. I mean, we we had two opportunities to play this fall, and our team played really well. And I, you know, and when when we have a scrimmage, we don't look real good. I just try to think back. I'm like, man, we played really well in the fall. When we played. <laughs> Catawba Valley and 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 Florence Darlington, two of the best junior colleges in the country. Uh, so, I think it's going to be a very competitive group, and we've got a good, we got a really really solid set of captains this year that that I think are going to be uh, outstanding player led group. Um, and 
we just want to go out and compete and play the best. And so I'll give you one more tidbit. We, I know our schedule's out, but we've got another series we picked up. So oh, okay. we, um, in late in April, we, we, we picked up a series at Pitt. So we'll have a three-game set up at Pittsburgh. Okay. Um, there was kind of a schedule and mishap. You know, we, were, we, we get a bye week with the Big South. It was supposed to be on our finals week. I guess, you know, we did, somehow they messed that up. And so we've kind of got a random bye weekend in there that that's just sitting there for no reason. So, um, so we're going to go up and play Pitt in Pittsburgh that weekend. I think it's the end of April. Uh, but I can't remember off the top of my head, but uh, but that's not on the schedule yet. But it's out there. Okay. As far as the Big South, is that like a totally different animal than a Miac, or is it Whew. comparable, or Coach, a lot tougher? It's a big step up. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man. All right. Yeah, hey, we make the challenge. Up. I mean, we like. I mean, I, I, so here, here's an easy way to explain it. I mean, you know, last year they had six kids drafted in the conference. They had a first rounder a couple of years ago, out of Campbell, and they had two teams in the NCAA tournament. And so that that's the benchmark for conferences. I mean, you know, the MEAC in baseball. You know, I mean, it is what it is. It's fact. We were one of the bottom conference RPI school uh, conferences in the country in baseball. Yeah. It just we were either 30 or 31 every year. And, you know, the Big South on a good year somewhere in the mid-teens. So it's a – it's a you know, we're, we jumped about eight different – ten different conferences in this move in baseball. So, so, so uh, who, 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 who's the heavyweight in the Big South? You know, yeah, Cam- Campbell is, is – Campbell? Dang. Really. They are, they are doing some amazing things down there. They uh, – Bowie's you know, Creek, North Carolina, huh? They uh, – you know they got an unbelievable facility down there. They they and they, they got a they got their own weight room that travels in a in a uh, in an eighteen wheeler that they travel with. It goes with them on their road trips. A weight room, literally. You know, so um, they're 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 definitely the class of the league. USC Upstate has a really good coach that got there a couple of years ago and has has made some big strides there in that program. Um, hey, you know what. Well, we- but, but we ahead. have Jamie. We have Jamie Serber, though, so that's like an equalizer, hey, right? We he's the best. He's the best pitching I, coach in the nation, so that's well, an equalizer. He he does a really good job, you know, and and uh, I know he's been really motivated because we didn't quite pitch the way we, we were used to pitching last year. So okay, um, you know, getting these guys back in the strike zone, you know, being in the top thirty and strike, you know, walks walks per nine is something that we we're, we're striving for on the mound. So um, yeah, I'm excited. Good deal. All right, Craig, got anything else before we let Coach go? No, the biggest thing, Coach, uh, uh, we opened up with Drake. I think it's Drake this weekend. Dayton. 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 Um, That game is at – the first one is at 4 on Friday. Is that right? Correct. And Saturday's time? Saturday will be a 1 o'clock game, and then uh, the Sunday game will be at noon to, to help them with the travel. On the way we should be getting some good weather. I'm thinking. I, I saw yeah, the forecast. Yeah, good weather all weekend. Yep. Yeah, we're we're very fortunate. La- their last two years, I was really worried about our home field. We were really wet, but uh, we're in pretty good shape right now. We got a, l- a little bit of rain Thursday night, but we should be in good shape. I'm gonna so. try to bring my wife because she um this she's like walks around in like a hazmat suit. She just hates this whole COVID deal, so she doesn't want to be around anybody. I she has, I. I I got season tickets, coach, and she hasn't been in one basketball game. So, but I feel with it being outdoors and there's been like so much room for social distancing, I can probably bring my wife and my, my kids. So, I, so where where do you like to sit, Smash? Uh, I just like to sit. It's not third base side. It's like kind of like that little nook, the uh, right right behind the dugout, right behind your dugout. So I'll give you a tidbit. Okay, we we started ripping out some seats the other day. So, oh my lord! Okay. The ones I think we all know about. Yeah. The bad <laughs> so, ones. you know, there's a section, that front section, it's right by where like our on deck guys are. That got people can bring their own chairs. You know, there's, it's just concrete now. So, oh, okay. and I think we're okay. going to take some steps here as quickly as we can, you know, in some of those sections where those seats are obviously uh, not usable to get rid of the seats and just have a place where you bring your own chairs and plop them down and, and and sit there a little bit more comfortably. <laughs> so. so so right now you guys are in the in the mix of removing this, like some of the old broken down seats from yeah. the stadium. Okay. Yeah. So, just, we, just, so we, we 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 might need to do a call to action for Blue Death Valley for that. We just have guys come up with uh you know drill and some 
<laughs> some, some equipment to say, put in, hey. have some shifts. Everybody do like five I'm, hours and get as many chairs as you can. And I've been saying it for years. I said you give you give you give me a sledgehammer and and you give this pro, these coaches and these players a, a wrecking ball. They're gonna go at it with it. You know they, they're gonna enjoy that. So right, but, right, okay. Yeah. So we're gonna let you we're gonna let you go. But before we do that, we can go around the horn, right? Around the horn. I need everybody. Give me start with Doug, right? We we'll go we we'll go Doug, Craig, me, and then you, Coach. What's okay. your favorite favorite baseball movie of all time, Doug? Come on now. Favorite baseball movie. Wow. I mean, I could go. You, I mean, the easy way out is Field of Dreams for sure. Uh, ah, okay. Angels in the outfield. Is nah, don't don't take Angels all of them. The hey, listen, listen. Uh, just, uh, <laughs> the, 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 me, the, the Sandlot. Me all day, Sam. I was, I was giving you my top I like three. That. Sam, I like no it. brainer, right? That's pretty no brainer. Me, Sam's. Kill That's me, pretty strong. Sam's. Killing me, Smalls. Yeah. Killing me, Smalls. Come on, Doug. You can't, you can't mess up the line. Smalls. <laughs> uh, that. All right, Craig. Yeah. Well, what's your oh, mm, favorite baseball movie? Uh, probably. Uh, what was the one with Robert Redford in it? Um, That's mine. The Nash, no, uh, the Nash Damn the natural. natural, yeah, that's probably probably my favorite. Good, one. probably my favorite. Yeah. Okay, so that, that was my favorite too. Nah, I like you know you know what? <laughs> nah, I, I'm almost I'm gonna go with the natural. Uh, but um, me and my I'm a bad parent. Me and my uh, youngest son, he's twelve. We watched Major League uh, for the first Major time. League, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, we, we snuck and watched that. That wasn't quite PG thirteen, but it was, you know, right. they, they had some, some they had some scenes in there. But yeah, he loved that. He was like, I, I told him I said, but part two is not that good, you know. So yeah, stick with part one. So I, I say the natural. Craig says the natural. You say uh, what Sandlot? What, what you got, Coach? Favorite baseball? Oh man. Um, I mean, for sure, it's Field of Dreams for me. Oh without, man, without a yeah. doubt. I mean, just yeah. the. You know, and it, and you think about this past was it this summer where they played the major league game, the Field of Dreams game? What oh, was, that, was yeah. that not awesome? That was the most believable. No, 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 it wasn't. The Yankees lost in a walk off. And, yeah, uh, you, it was no, a it really cool thing. Yeah, yeah it was, that was, it was nice. probably White the Sox. one. I guess that might be the, the only thing Major League Baseball is getting right right now, yeah. uh, unfortunately. But they need they need a new commissioner, coach. But I'll get, go Bull Durham yeah. officially for me. I'll yeah. Durham. <laughs> Plus, our ballparks in Bull Durham, right? War Memorial. Yeah, so, yeah, you know, yeah, you gotta, yeah. You gotta, yeah. You gotta, that's that true. Love right there. They mentioned it. They mentioned it. Yeah, that and that was uh, man, so many good baseball movies. I tell you, baseball is one of my favorite sports. Yeah, you know, when I was working in uh, Houston, I, I was working in Toyota Center with the Rockets, and after work, I would just walk down the street because the uh, Minute Maid's on the same street as Toyota Center. And I would get like a five dollar ticket, nosebleed ticket, and I was sitting. Yeah. I find an empty seat. And I, I I went to like maybe uh, probably 50, 60 games every year watching you know Astros baseball. So yeah, yeah. I, I tell you, man, it's it's an addictive sport, man. I tell you, it's and, and I feel like we are on the cusp when people see the track and field program and they see that's being unprecedented. I believe, I honestly believe, with you and your coaching staff. And with the numbers we have, because we have great, you know, enrollment, we got resources, and now we got the, the stadium under our, you know, mm -hmm. umbrella. I believe that baseball is going to be the, the next sport at A&T that, that makes a name on a national scale. Yeah. I see us being on ESPN. I see us being College World Series. I, I, I'm serious. I, I think yeah, we, this is we, going to be something big. I'm not going to, you know, we, that's why you play Division One baseball is to go to Omaha. So, mm. uh, we're we're gonna our, we're gonna travel out there this year and play Creighton. Our kids are gonna get first taste of what what the national championship stadium looks like. We'll we'll play right. two games against Creighton in the national in TD Ameritrade ballpark, um, and make sure these guys get a good look at what the what the last you know eight teams look like when they're in the College World Series. And um, because in our sport it's doable, you know, mid majors have won the national title. Mm -hmm. in baseball. Right. So it just takes it takes synergy, it takes aggressiveness, it takes vision, it takes players at you know really high level players, and um, you know it's doable. You know you just have to keep plowing through and and keep putting yourself in positions to do it. So that's what we're going to keep working for. 
All right, so we got got three games this weekend, everybody. Blue Death Nation, I need you guys. A men's team lost tonight by almost yeah. twenty. Did the girls win? The ladies, they hold on, they come back, they lose, they lost too. So we, so so we, so we spent, we, we took our lumps in uh, basketball, but we can make it up with the hardball. Still America's pastime. So we got Coach Hall here. He's he's get he's giving me such inspiration. I, I'm inspired now. Oh man! So I, I'm gonna see you out there this weekend, Coach. At least one day, maybe a couple. Awesome, you know. Yeah. Good deal. All right. So thank you a lot, Coach, for coming out. And we will, like I say, Appreciate please, it, if you if you need some stuff, call our bluff. We got a whole bunch of guys who act like they are just billionaires. These uh, you know, uh, cryptocurrency <laughs> kings and all that stuff. <laughs> I, I want I, I want you to make them show and prove. So come out with some fundraising stuff, and we can see who's for real, who's fake. We'll right? do it. All right. I'll, I'll, I'm not afraid to call you. I'll make sure. You know. I know you'll call us out. So I'll call you out too. I will get it. Yes, right. sir. <laughs> no, no, you know what? Coach. Coach. You, you bought my, hey, you bought my loyalty, though. You gave me the hat. I can't say All nothing right. now. Let's you know. go. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Coach. Thanks for coming yeah. out, man. Y'all appreciate it, Coach. Thank Best you. Good luck to you. See y'all.